name's Keith McDonald. I've been, I'm a beekeeper, been in bees for 50 odd years, and this is my son and my grandson with me. <laughs> no, I was 19 years of age when I first started with a brother-in-law of mine in Wangaratta. It was, a, it was a bit of a hobby to help him build bee boxes and that, and then I caught the bug from there. I'm, a, I'm Andrew Nicklaws. Um, when we first started, way back in about, so I was 11 years of age when we first started to um, build the bee operation. We had 11 hives of bees that were left from Dad sort of let them run down a bit. And from there we've slowly built them up to, well it was 2300 hives, but we've actually brought it back to about 1500. We're just finding it a little bit easier to manage that amount of bees. It's just, look, it's a great life. I love working the bees and my son here, Thomas, is um, going to probably take on, or here on I hope. <laughs> well hopefully I'm still continuing the family job for another couple of generations yet. I hope my kids take it over. So I couldn't stand my first job, it would drive me mad. That's why I left school at the age of 15. I couldn't see anything else I'd better do with my life than go out and be with my father, occasionally with the grandfather coming out there to work the bees. Just enjoyment. I suppose I take almost as much enjoyment as my dad does out of it. I love leaving home, especially on the beautiful sunny days. You go out, the hum of the bees, everything, it's lovely. I just, look, I love it. I wouldn't do anything else, actually, even though my wife would like me to sometimes. <laughs> You must know about how to, re how to look after your queens and how to look after your hives. You have to know your floral sources, which flows are going to flower and when they're going to flower and their nectar producing potentials. And I know this sounds funny, but some years you can have too much water and some of the crops will fail because the water, it actually washes the, the nectar out and the crops will fall over on you. Um, other years, like we just had the stringy bark in the year just gone, failed to yield properly purely because there was insufficient water. We got honey off it, but we didn't get as much as you should have. Um, this coming year, hopefully with this drought breaking, I would expect a pretty good honey season for most people here in Victoria. There are years when we've gone up to Dubbo um, in the Gnu Forest. I was up there about 204 or something. Uh, not this autumn gone, the one before, we went to Malakuta. We worked the bloodwood over there because there was just nothing here. And that's the beauty about the bees. You can move, pick them up and you can shift you know, 400, 500 kilometres if you wish to, but on the years when there's nothing, you, you go and you have to, and that's how it is. And it gives me a break for my wife too. <laughs> uh, you don't like bees, things you shouldn't be in bees. <laughs> Over the years, I've taken some hammerings with bees, but it's part of life with beekeeping. When we were working that bloodwood over there, and I went back to the bungalow that night and went to pull my shirt off, and you couldn't pull the shirt off this shoulder, it was actually stuck to the shoulder. I've never seen bees so savage as on that bloodwood. I reckon we were probably getting 80 or 100 stings a day over there. But an average day is probably, look, you get your dozen or 15 a day average when you're working. He's taken a few, he's taken a few more batterings than I have actually tipped a hive over, unloaded them there one day and it fell down the telescopic boom and just fell all over him. I reckon there was 500 bees on him <laughs> and it didn't seem to phase him. So yeah, it's in his blood. <laughs> Gave me a headache and made me sick for about oh, five, six hours afterwards. <laughs> These here are what we call our changeover boxes. When the hives are actually full, we come along Pull the full box of honey up and put one of these empty ones underneath it and then we come along a few days later and we take the full box of honey away and they're brought back here into the shed. This is the full box of honey, freshly bobbed as you take off the bees, they run about 80 pound. Bees run the honey up top, fill the box up, it's around oh, 6, 7 pound to the frame, about 80 pound to the hive. Bees stack into these little hexagons here, they put caps over the top to preserve the honey. These little bits across the top there, just their way of preserving it to stop the water getting in it during the winter times. 60,000 bees to a good box, it'll take them around oh, 10 days to 12 days, it'll take to fill one of these boxes to about the weight of 80 pounds. From here, we come on into the hot room here. We usually leave the honey here just overnight and it takes it up to about 26, 27 centigrade in the boxes. And from here, this is what they call a uncapping machine. The honey drain is capping this machine. There's a couple of rotating knives here to take the, um, the caps off the top. Now, once it leaves there, it comes out the end of the rack here. The frames are checked to make sure all the caps have come off. And as, they, as the frames are pulled off there, they're put into this here, which is a what they call a honey extractor. It's just a centrifuge machine. As, the, as it builds up speed, it um, spins the honey out just from pure centrifugal force. Now, once it comes out of here, it goes up this honey pipe here, and it comes on out down the line here, and this honey tank here, it sits in here. This tank holds about 12, about 14 drums when it's full, which is about what they do in a single day. And it's uh, left centre there for about five or six hours, and then it's tapped off into IBC. Each day when that honey tank is full, we have to take one of these samples out of the tank. 
this is our security to say that we've done the right thing. If you have a look at some of these different samples here, this one here, the little bit lighter one, is actually iron bark, and you'll notice how particularly light it is. And if I hold this one up along the side here, you'll notice the difference in the colour, which it's stringy bark, and it's quite a bit different. I've seen them, some of them almost as pure as water, and I've seen some of them almost as black as charcoal. It just depends on the type of honey it is and where it's from. Well, there's been a lot of changes in beach weather in, in the actual town. The town in the last 30 years has gone ahead in leaps and bounds, the town has. In regards to the changes I can recall, I, when I was a kid, and I'm talking 10 or 12, there was only about four houses where we are. There was mum and dad's up here, there was the house that I live in just down here, and there was two or three more houses up the corner, and I have seen, I just remember the town expanding out. Even these two sheds we're in here now, I mean, they're only since 2000. Generally, it's a really great place to be, just generally. And the community is a really good community here. As it's expanded over the years, the closeness has deteriorated a little bit, but I still know a lot of the people in the town. Um, as far as your kids look, you can let your kids go up the street and you know they are going to come home, which in a lot of your bigger cities, you know, you're not going to let them out of your sight. Oh, it was a fantastic place to live. There was plenty of fishing, plenty of other sports you could do, soccer and that was running down the schools. And just a fantastic place to live as far as I'm concerned. Like all my uncles want to come and live, they all live in Melbourne, they all want to come and live here. <laughs> so yeah, I, look, I, I'd recommend, if you, you want to raise a family, Beachworth's a great place to do it. I'm proud of it, I am. I'm really happy that my son wants to go on and do it because you know, you build it all up. When we started, we had nothing. We built it up to what it is today. And I, I'm desperately hoping somebody takes it over because otherwise it's sad to see it end, whether it's this or anything else. Oh, I'd love to see myself work on the bees for into the future now. And if, I, if I have kids in the future, I'd like to probably see them taking them over if I'm still doing them. It's fantastic to be able to look back and see that three generations of several beekeepers are now gone and hopefully I don't do anything to muck it up along the way. But times will see, I'm sure.